Come on, let's put our hands together and celebrate God. <laughs> Hallelujah. On Wednesday, I started a work on kingdom culture. All right. So I'm going to um, pick it up and then continue uh, this Wednesday. And of course, you know that on Sunday is uh, changing your world. And the place where we have read is Isaiah chapter 9, you know, and verse 6. And Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7, where it says that unto us a child is born, a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And then the increase of his kingdom, kingdom government, you know, and of his peace, there shall be no end. All right. And we started allowing ourselves into having an understanding. Listen to me. All right. There's nothing that is going to produce in your life except the kingdom of God. All right. It is the gospel of the kingdom that Jesus Christ brought. He didn't bring any other gospel. All right. And Jesus Christ came he, preaching the arrival of the kingdom of God. In other words, that is what is needed. If you need a transformation, a change, and a turnaround, then there has to be an intrusion of the kingdom. And when he brought in, he came, he demonstrated the kingdom with miracles, signs, and wonders. What that means is that anywhere the force of the kingdom come, all right, anything that is having a heyday in that place is about to be intimidated and be arrested. So that's why he said that when a strong man keeps his place, his good are in place. But when a stronger man arrives, what the stronger man is the kingdom of God. When the stronger arrive, then he binds that strong man and then take his goods, you know, and his possession. You have to understand that it is very important to know that because when you understand that you are in the kingdom that rules over all, it frees you from fear of the headlines that you see on TV. Look at your neighbor and say, relax, God is in control. Uh, come on, say with energy, say, neighbor, relax, God is in control. All right, and so when God begins to release his word, he released the good seed of the kingdom. All right, and when the good seed of the kingdom touched the good soil, what that means is that there's nothing wrong with the good seed of the kingdom message. If there is no production, check the soil. Am I talking here? All right, the position of your heart all right, will determine the production that is going to come. But when the good seed seed meet the good soil then it takes root and begin to produce and create a person with what we call kingdom characteristics all right and when i'm doing somebody might be saying what well, but you're not here on wednesday what that means is that the person you know with kingdom mindset kingdom language kingdom value kingdom lifestyle and then kingdom agenda we did with that you know you know on wednesday okay so but you have to understand and, uh, that Jesus Christ will not do your part and then baby don't do God's part all right you are supposed to utilize the king the keys of the kingdom Jesus said that I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom but the building of the church leave it to me all right I will build the church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it okay but how does he build the church he builds the church using the material that he only have which is the message of the kingdom am i talking here that's why when you neglect gathering like this wednesday and then the teaching like this then you can do rituals but rituals can produce uh, the fruit of the kingdom okay so if he's going to build the church this is what he said he said when you come to me i'm going to make you come on am i talking here but if i'm going to make you i have to use the ingredient that i already only have uh, that's the message of the kingdom which is the word uh, and when i pick the word of god and then begin to build the church with it then it begins to create the characteristics uh, you know that i mentioned earlier on so he builds it in a specific way uh, he plants his word of the kingdom in our hearts uh, uh, but he's going to take time uh, that's why may have can produce let me announce to you you are not going to analyze this uh, because the effectual 
you know, fervent prayer of a righteous availed much and is tremendous in power. It makes tremendous power available. But you have to understand again that the incorruptible seed of the word of God can never fall to the ground until it produces that which was sent for it to produce. Uh, am I talking here? I say, am I talking here? Look at your neighbor and say, be careful with the word. All right, so when the word comes uh, and it enters, the Bible said that the entrance of the word, uh, the challenge is that the word have to enter. The entrance of the word will always produce uh, and create. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, allow the word to enter. That is how he builds you. When he begins to allow the word, then, you know, then the word begins to you know, you know, grow in you uh, and transforms, renews your mind, and then it begins to change your thinking uh, and you start to think differently. Uh. You see, when I look at you last year and then look at you this year, if your thinking doesn't change, uh, then the kingdom is not working in your life. Uh. Because if the word enters, uh, then your language is going to change. Uh, but your language will not change until your thought life change. Uh, because words are nothing but thought clothed in vocabulary. Uh. Come on, put your hands together if you understand what I'm talking about. Uh. So you have a new set of values and then you have core convictions. Uh. When that begins to happen, uh, then get ready because God is getting ready to use you like a seed. Uh. Don't forget, uh, he takes the seed and draws it in you. Uh. Then you mature and become a son of the kingdom uh, or a daughter of the kingdom. Uh. That you know transforms you uh, into a reflection of a representative of uh, and an agent of a kingdom uh, as one that possesses uh, kingdom characteristics. Uh, your language is different. Uh, your lifestyle is different. Uh, your mindset is different. Come and put your hands together if you understand. Uh, hold your neighbor. Pull their hand as if you want to pull. Uh, say neighbor, your mind has to change. Your language has to change. Your lifestyle has to change. But that's a kingdom and you're smelling like hell. See, Shangia, the Duke of Mata, the Zagia. The devil is a liar. When you come into the kingdom, the language have to change. But that would you brought bench about King Kabako by King Kia. That would you praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Glory. Come on, put your hands together. If you understand, sha. Uh, no, push the care of your neighbor push it in front of you say neighbor your language got to change why will your language change you will always enter into everything that you are speaking about you will cut your future put your hands together Shout! Oh no, you're not helping me. We are feel in this place. We are much in this place. But not just medium, just few people. I say, put those hands together and shout. Once you have core convictions uh, and you begin to exhibit these kingdom characteristics, uh, then uh, then get ready. Of course, it's going to happen over a period of time. But when you are ripe and you become matured. Then get ready. Why? Because now you become a seed. And God is going to take you and plant you in dark houses. God is going to take you and plant you in military. Plant you in navy. Plant you in government house. Plant you in house of assembly. Plant you in the banking system. Plant you in dark places. Why? Because he knows that the kingdoms of this world is about to become the kingdom of our God. But the light will not get there until your matured light is planted there. Oh no, you're not hearing what I'm talking about. I say you're not hearing what I'm talking about. Let me tell you, you're not the light of the church. You're the light of the world. Oh no, somebody began what I'm saying. I say you're not the light of the church. You're the light of the world. You're the light of GTB. You're the light of Fresh Bank. You're the light of the judiciary. You're the light. So God is going to pick you, but he's not going to plant almost any kind of person. He's going to plant people that he has trust. They are mature believers. So that when they go there, they change the system so that the place is looking like heaven. That will be done. That kingdom come. Where? On earth. On earth. So that you don't go and then pollute the place. So, so listen to me. 
We are in the season and this is the time that God is putting his people in places of influence. And the reason is so that they can intercept and drill the works of the devil. Come on, put your hands together if you understand what I'm talking about. Get ready for the next level promotion. You are that manager. God is about to plant you. But you have to be careful when God is planting and understand that seeds don't start big. So he might plant you. You are moving files in the office, but you're about to take over that office. Because you're going to grow. And when I'm again in Kirikikua, he might plant you as second in command or third in command. Don't be confused. You are planted. The aim is that so that you can take over. And of the increase of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Nobody in this place is supposed to stay at the same place. When you start a business, it's supposed to grow. When you're coming to an organization, you're supposed to grow. Not just grow, but grow to take over. I'm going to help you. Come on, put your hands together. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's taking over time. But it's not going to put you, it's going to put you in dark houses. In dark places. He's going to put you, nobody lights a candle and put it under a bushel. So when he puts the word in the inside of you, he's getting ready to light you up. So when the light grows in you and you become mature, you are lighted. When you are lighted, get ready. God himself will take you and put you. He's going to place you. God himself. He's going to pick you and place you. Why is he planting you? So that you can bring light in that place. So that corruption can end in that place. So that students that are feeling wired in that secondary school will start passing wired because light has just arrived. You're not a representative of a kingdom if you're teaching in a school, you go there late, you abuse the students, you don't make sure your slabbers is okay, and you no, you're not the light. When you are the light, your class will be different. You spend the night studying and you will take, that's it. Why were you irunku? Why were you dubaku? Kai, come on, not do say. No, you're not the light. When you're the light, you don't go to a school and join the gossip in the school. You're a demon, not the light. When you're the light, you don't connive to bring the principal or any other person. When you're a light, when he puts you there, he wants the place to be lighted up. When you're a light, he doesn't take you into the treasury and then you're changing figures because you want to blow. You're not a mature thought. You can be an accountant and you're stealing and you're destroying the system. You can't be working with the government for the government. You go to the place of work late. You're not the light. Things are spoiling. You're not helping to change. Use your salary and change it. You're not the light. Come on, you're not hearing what I'm talking about. Come on, put your hands together if you understand what I'm talking about. I said, come on, put those hands together. If you... Some of you, the only reason why you go to the place of work is because you want the money. You're more than that money. God can supply your need without your job. So you're not employed, you're deployed. You are the light. Come and put your hands together. It's part of faith. You have to have a different mentality than any other person that is working in your place. You're not the same. You know why you're there. Why are you there? And of the increase of his kingdom government, there shall be no end. Not only are you taking over the place, but you're bringing the force of the kingdom of God in that place. That's why when that happened, they will ask you, who is your God? Where is your God? Take us to the mountain of your God. Then you say, that, let's go to House of Refuge 2.0. Come and put those hands together. You can be a light in a school. Can I start an exam? You're not the light. You can be a light in the evening as a lady, Mota Nigeria, El Keki. A weekend, you are not the light. Yeah, we actually. Yeah. 
Ina jin numfa shi mutane. Lokaci na ya kare. Na ce ina jin numfa shi mutane. Lokaci na ma ya kare. Lokaci lokaci na ya kare. Gaskiya Allah ya taimake ku. I have six minutes. How many of you are happy you are in church? What that means is that when you are on fire, God is about to position you in dark houses. Dark places. Tough environment. Listen to me. God is not after this wimpy, punky, lamey, stealing good Christianity. No. Tough people. Tough people that can take a licking and keep on ticking. You see, the reason why you're a little bit shocked is because we are in a generation of safety, comfort, and security. But God is going to put you in tough places. So that little like the poor place will just bow. God is about to give you a dream that will change the world. God is about to take you in an organization that comes with your kule. There's a problem they can't solve. You just appear with the answer. You're not hearing what I'm talking about. The boss is confused. Your presence, you look, and then God talks to you in the middle of the night. You have solutions. And it's not you, it's God. The reason is so that you can take over. Why? Because the kingdoms of this world. You're not hearing what I'm talking about. Your business is about to take off. It's about to skyrocket and position itself. Your place of work is about to change because your life is about to change. You are not ordinary. We are the taking over generation. We are the light of the... Come on, put your hands together. Yes, yes, you. You You are ready to take over that place. You look ordinary, but there is something strong in the inside of you. There is something bigger. Greater is he that is in the inside of you than the devil that is outside there. Your greatness begins with the greater one in, the, in you. Come and put your hands together. You're not a failure. You're not a mistake. You're not a product, you know, of your biological parents. Before your parents allowed you to come here, God knew you. Come and put those hands together. I said, come and put your hands together. Jesus said, I send you as sheep among wolves. What do wolves do to sheep? But Jesus said, I will send you there. But Jesus is not getting ready to feed wolves. No. That's why if you're going there, you have to make him your shepherd. If he's not your shepherd, you will be a meat to the wolves. Am I talking here? Because when he sends you to the wolves, in the wolves' den, in dark places, the only comfort that you have is his rod and his staff. They comfort you. And though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Some of you, you're doing work as if you're on your own. You'll be taken out without surprise. But you see, when he is your shepherd, you have boldness. The righteous are as bold as the lion. You're not confused. You're not deterred. Why? You know that the God that placed you there, he's guiding you. That's why you can boldly say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. You don't begin to drink and until oil. Okay, she go office. Second at Zuba, may a window. No, that's religion. God that sent you, he's your shepherd. You don't bring holy water character was our seed. Every no, that's religion. Once he sent you, you walk there every demon bow because no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rise. Oh, come on, Bakugani me neke fadaba. Neche Bakugani me neke fadaba. Kogu makasa mi wensu wensu prophet. Ah, ya kamata mu maka dua. I'm not saying that you don't call your pastor to the new office. It's okay. But don't be ritualistic. Don't be ritualistic. You can boldly say. You see, one day, come on, put your hands together. You can't touch me. And when he sent me there, if you're going to survive, you must, okay, all right. It's not that I'm a match to the adversity. No. It's that the adversity is not matched to the God that sent me. My time is done. Now 
I'm going to kill you. Come on, come on. I tap on I say, come on. The advice, the advice to me is not my. And listen to me. God is committed to you. You're not hearing what I'm saying. I say, God is committed to you. Look at Chinakari. God is committed to you. That look we have to look at Chinakari. I said, God is committed to you. I said, God is committed to you. And you're not going to end like this. Your best days is beginning now. Greater days is starting now. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Just stay in the word. Stay in church. Allow the word to grow in you. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May he give you peace. I bring you into the new season of new things. The new is here. 